before the video starts, I just want to mention that this video is linked to a fundraiser for the Trevor Project. If you can give, please consider doing so. In case you missed the opportunity from Dana Terrace's stream the other day, and you want to give in a couple bucks, there's a button over there. I'm very tired. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill. This is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture, except in living under a rock. As we continue our journey, <laughs> watching more and more of the Owl House, we're back, baby. Season 2B, which is such a, a it's fine. I watched the new episode of the Owl House season Season 2B, Follies at the Coven Day Parade. I'm going to be cutting to my initial reactions and responses, those quick clips, the interesting parts that happened there, and then back here for the collected thoughts, the theories, the whatnot. And there's a lot. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, check the settings, set them to all, blah, 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 YouTube words. I have a gaming channel linked in the description, Bill Chill Gaming. Speaking of the description, there is a link there to a card that will send you to uh, resources for social awareness and education, mental health, crisis lines, driver project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them? A two-second Google search defines follies or folly as a lack of good sense, foolishness, or a costly ornamental building with no practical purpose, especially a tower or mock gothic ruin built in a large garden or park. So probably the second one. Yeah, spoilers, spoiler warnings for the Owl House, created by Dan Terrace, on a channel. <laughs> Nothing even happens, everyone's fine, everyone just has tea. Yeah, like I said, just cutting to the highlights of me watching it for the first time, then back here for the notes, the theories, the collected thoughts, the analysis, the breakdowns, the new theory I'm dubbing the Bellows Bag Theory. And good thing the Hootie Hole Theory still holds up, because now it has a little sibling. <laughs> Enjoy. I thought something was wrong with the video, that's great. Ah! Mom can pick me up. Yay, hi Principal Bump. Tell my mom I'm safe here. Which is why we send all our troublemakers to our new and improved detention pit. God damn it, oh my god. The real emperor was society all along. We are Emperor Bellows. What's he like under all that? Beautiful. I mean? Oh! <gasps> Oh, that's a double. Oh, human stuff and learning Spanish. Oh, thank you. Gay, 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 gay. Say gay. Yes, vibes. Yes, gay. Um. It's not you. It never was. Don't, don't show it again. No, oh, I remember. Oh, kiddo. Luz, please talk to somebody. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh shit. Yay, okay, you told somebody. Uh, can we not with the statue? Is that guard wearing cat ears? I guess they just have horns or ears? Mother, please. No, I'm not seeing anyone. Yes, I am standing up straight. No. No, don't. I don't want to give a shit about you. Hello? Mother? Mother? No. I won't eat my vegetables. No. Anyway. Guess why we're here? Okay. Ida hired someone to spy on her ex. <gasps> Rain! Yes, say they all the time. Me! Oh! No! Get them off the billboard! You, you fix this. You want me to like you? You fix this shit. And then she, she said if I don't make it back for the family reunion, I'd be banished for posting that the family home. But I failed too many bitches. Oh, I no. Banished, no. Sucks. And she didn't blink when your girlfriend was thrown down a pit. Oh, True. And not the hot kind of bad. Ha! Agreed. I'm stopping the episode. I don't wanna. I don't wanna give a shit about Kiki Mora. You can't make me. Hootie backpack! Oh god. Hootie hole theory. <laughs> the angry guards. Mirror <laughs> fireworks. She'll get the best of both worlds. She'll set an example for us all. Are you okay, Luce? Oh, it's not that romantic. It's romantic! Like they're wrong! Hootie! Too many questions. Yes, Willow! It's been a while since I came here. Yay! Luz says she hasn't been to the human realm, but I just get the feeling that she's lying. And I can find out the truth by watching this. Oh, I just get the feeling that she's lying. And I can find out the truth by watching this. Amity, no. I'm not gonna invade her privacy. 
Amity, yes. Do you still know how to braid hair? <gasps> Yay! Friendship! Oh, Yay! The power of friendship! Let's use that magic instead. Rain, why are you not covered in vines? What? But I'm just happy to do my part. Why are they acting like everything's just normal fine? Hi? Hello. Tara's been helping me recover. I can't remember anything with these uh, headaches. Oh, she's evil. No, bad flower. I don't trust you, Phyllis. Oh my God. Oh, I love the abomination float. Yet, yeah, time to f shit up. <laughs> do it like this. Ew, hootie. More like Bulos. <laughs> More like Bor Ragnarok. No, no. Oh, thank f Oh, I was gonna throw up. I don't want to see them doing anything bad. Oh, I don't like the finger guns with their spells. Worship me! <laughs> Ida, what are you doing here? I had to make sure you were okay. Saving your ass. We haven't spoken in years. Oh, fuck. And I can't associate with wild witches anymore. It so move aside. No! This is cruel. Music is not a weapon. Music is magic. Oh, he's leaning on his stealing Lego now. <laughs> <laughs> Do crimes, Hoot Hoot. The shiny new badge. Oh, well, guess not. You can't just promise the illusion of respect. Amity, yay! No, music is not a weapon. No, I don't like evil rain or brainwashed rain. That looks cool, but I hate this. Say anything. Yay! Just don't contact me again. No, I don't like this for them. You really are a kind person. Especially when you're projecting. I knew it. Dude, kick her ass. Abomination magic is amazing in combat. Tara, shouldn't you be babysitting the bar? Haha, <laughs> your action had consequences. And to think I started to feel bad for you. I can't help if I don't know what's going on. Tell me what happened. Thank you. Oh, that makes me so happy. As does the burning finger gun bellows. Thank you, everyone. Boo. The Um, I can finally take off this mask. Let me look on you with my own eyes. Thank you, boiling eyes. Okay. Ha! I was waiting for it to not really be him. Ooh, shit. Sorry, I was so quiet because I'm like, <laughs> I too was waiting to see what the Emperor had to say. That was mean! Good, whatever. I don't want to give a fuck about Kikimura. Fuck it. I don't- I've been trying to figure out how to word this without sounding like I'm telling the Owl House to smile more, doll. Damn. Like, the jokes are really great to balance out how fairly intense this episode got, but I'm just like, damn, I really could have used an actual folly at a parade, but if musicals have taught me anything, Follies and Parade doesn't always mean Follies and Parade. Uh, look at some mornings first if you want to look into that. But yeah, this episode centers around, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Macy's Day, the Follies Day Parade, a celebration of the wonderful magic government and the division of magic. Kikimura, turns out, has um, stuff going on. By God, you almost got me to care. I appreciate it a lot. Antagonists or antagonistic characters need to have depth, complexity, literally personality. It almost worked and it tied really nicely into what Luce is going through right now, having just traumatically left her mom behind in the human world. Even in her flashback to that moment, the dialogue's kind of different, which could just be a technical thing to save on time to kind of abridge the memory. But I also kind of really liked the slight variation in the memory, not only being a, a human thing, unless you are fortunate enough to have that skill. It kind of leaned more into the takeaway Luce had here, never come back to that place again and stay here. Kind of what Camila said in a panic, but not quite. But I think it also kind of illustrates how even what you say in the heat of the moment, sometimes you say things you don't mean to get a rise out of somebody or because you're scared or hurt or angry. That doesn't change the 
impact. Um, I know I talked about that in my yesterday's live video, my Camila video essay -y thing. Intention doesn't always equate to the impact. I liked taking a, a moment at the top to just give us a little lumity. Amity's using a human cookbook to learn Spanish, and I really loved that, and I really needed it given everything just going on with all that stuff. Say gay, all that, all that stuff. It was just a, a reminder of, you know, oh look, <laughs> I didn't explode from watching, from watching a queer relationship in a show. Like it just, I just really needed just to sit in that for a moment. It was really nice and super blushes, kiss on the cheek goodbye, like, I don't know. We open on loose kind of vlogging, not only getting, you know, her own thoughts and energy out there kind of like a, a diary, but also it was, you know, see mom, I can, it's just a little cute ball of light uh, getting what's her name's hair on fire. See, here's the authoritarian principle at the school I go to, see mom, school, see mom, structure, and then haha, <laughs> detention. I liked how it was almost like reality was kind of keeping her away from exaggerating the positives or tampering down the realities, the danger, the scary things. I really liked that opening. Hootie was terrifying. That was his skin disguise hanging out to dry. The Hootie old theory still stands. It's magic. Because also, what is, if not the Titan itself, a skeleton. Um, also possible foreshadowing for the bellows bag theory. One day. <laughs> we cut to everybody at school. Willow and Gus are kind of speculating about Bellows. Why does he cover his face? I kind of like how that kind of set you up for this weird, ominous... It was so subtle, it almost felt like a mistake. The Emperor is looking forward to meeting you, Luce. What do you mean, meeting you? What? And then Amity even said, I thought you already met. Is he just rude? I mean, I know he's got a lot on his plate lately. Kind of setting you up there, speculation on Bellos, and then the weird pacing of, we, the audience, have seen his face, but now here's the There's something about that where it's like, oh, that reveal wasn't the reveal. That's not Bellows. Um, I wrote that a lot. We get a lot of fun visuals just seeing another way that the Boiling Isles does a, a holiday or uh, an important day of some kind. The festivities, the balloons, the other floats. I like the how the illusion won. Here's the guy from the the Looking Glass Ruins just doing doing a thing. Oh no, tee -hee. It's birds. It's all an illusion. Another uh, reveal, if you will. Much like how Hootie took off his skin, everything has layers. Not everything is as it seems. I loved Luz finding out Ida used to date Rain, another queer relationship in the show. When that relationship was confirmed, it was such a dour feeling and knock, knock, knock it on Hootie's door. I'm glad that theory was confirmed. This isn't how I pictured it. We had like a positive, ah, like I loved that. It was exciting and I loved seeing everybody be supportive and happy for each other uh, should they find someone and want to find someone that makes them happy. They were an enemy of the Emperor until recently and now they're just chilling there and like it was just, there was something about the line delivery, great performance, great direction. Yes, keep saying they and like hitting on lines where it's like, well, they wouldn't do that and it's like, it just, it was so satisfying. Shout out to the Enbies. It was just nice to like hear that and hear it so sharp and clear. Good luck fucking up those subtitles or captions or whatever they're called. I did, I did feel for Kikimura, even if you're a jerk working for a, a bad, a bad place with a bad, with bad leadership, doing a bunch of awful, stupid things. Felt like both sides were being manipulative. Like if you don't show up to this, you're banished from her mom on the phone. I guess Kikimura's performance at work has been lackluster, so... She's also afraid there as well as afraid of Emperor Bellos. I liked feeling that split. And I loved also feeling Luce kind of latch on to it. Luce's folly of, uh, if I can prove it through Kiki Mora's situation, then I will be fine too. No, you need to talk about it. I'm glad she at least talked about it with Ida and King because they reference it uh, casually, but she's not telling her friends and she's not telling Amity. I <laughs> Open up when, when you're ready to start talking about it to your awesome girlfriend. Like, I liked the trajectory there. The folly was, no, ignore it. I don't want to talk about it or think about it. <laughs> Kiki Mora's faith is wavering due to a hostile workplace. <sighs> Hope Kiki Mora's getting paid fairly and has benefits and... Oh yeah, Hootie fucks. Or at least gets around. 
I'm glad there's the backpack now because they just stuffed him in the backpack and it's like, we need some levity. Like, him and King especially, like, really did a good job at balancing out how heavy a lot of this was. And then getting to see, like, Amity reach out to Willow and kind of test the waters of if this is a, a safe space or a welcoming space, like, understanding Willow's boundaries. But she also did look sad at the end of it, so I'm wondering if it's just a little harder for Willow. I appreciate Amity's appreciation and respect to Luce's privacy, but also the honesty of, I am tempted to look through her phone. I know that is wrong. What do I do? I, I don't know. I, I hope that relationship continues to mend. That sadness in Willow's face just made me think, like, there's a little bit more uh, groundwork to be done. Oh, and I also really love that Rain was still a kind and considerate person, even under the evil tea spell. Same person, just now, now it's for the benefit of the bad guys. And I'm not a fan. I didn't like Evil Rain. They made me really sad. Freaking, what's her name? Freaking Tara's... <laughs> I forgot I wrote Tara's step on me, dragon. No. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be a quick fix. I Or I, I hoped. I didn't think that genuinely, I just hoped for it. That was also kind of one of my favorite things, and I, I don't want this to sound like a negative. I think this was intentional. I applaud it. Normally, you know, a witch's duel or a witch's battle, whether it was between Ida and Lilith or Amity and Hunter, there's like this fun fluidity to it. The, the spells almost look like gelatin. The animation gets like really intensely like smooth and exciting, and it's a little different. That didn't happen here, or if it did, it wasn't for very long. I don't, I also didn't watch this on the greatest of uh, video quality. If that was the intention, it was a visual nod to let you know nobody's heart was truly in this fight. This is not a witch's duel. I liked the, with a simple string pluck, they just like blamp and like kind of ended the fight. Like they're powerful as fuck. Everything where it's like, ha, huh, that seems cute, it's like frightening. Like the plant magic ended up being a lot bigger than it seemed at first. Abomination has so much different uses. Now even bard magic, it's like, mm, music as a weapon, which no, music is not a weapon, music is magic. The brainwashing tea, the, the confusion of what's been happening, it, it raises the stakes, but then it's also not so direct as glowy eye, yes, master, I liked how it still had this conflict of ideologies right now, having that extra layer of, but that's not them. Under traditional circumstances, that's not what they were thinking, that's not what they were doing. I loved how that felt, it was very unique. And then they told Ida to travel, which first I thought was like a haha breakup joke, you need to process our breakup more, because in their mind, they haven't spoken in years. Take a vacation, they don't want Ida there, for whatever the hell's gonna happen to wild witches when the Day of Unity shows up, which is in a month. Speaking of witches duels, it was really cool to see the Lumity team up combo attacks, but it was it was kinda it was kinda like more aggressive as well as a little faster. And I'm like, oh yeah, we might have to start fighting someone soon. And I'm excited to see that. I think that's gonna be the next step here is learning how to do a witch's duel with glyph magic. It was exciting to see them like, ooh, what are you gonna do? Ice fist gun punch, like, ugh. It was just cool. Yeah, Emperor hasn't met Luce, and then Amity bringing it up again, again, solidifies that that wasn't some sort of weird retcon or, oops, <laughs> we didn't check the notes. I, I know they're better than that. But yeah, that's not Bellows. I think we, we the audience, have seen Bellows. I don't think old, old man face, face with the thing, I don't think that's Bellows. I think that's one of the brothers. Let me know, do you want the Bellows Bag Theory video? I did the Hootie Hole Theory video. Let me know, I'd be more than happy to collect those thoughts so they make a little more sense. Amity being an awesome girlfriend, I agree. Tell me what happened. This is a safe place for you to open up. I want to help. I can't help if I don't know what's going on. In a sense, also kind of narratively rewarding, Amity didn't peak. So it was a much better situation, warmer conversation, for everybody and everything, the audience included, to not have the, sorry, I looked at your phone. You know, we only have one month to the Unity Day. Oh, when the tide is at its lowest and the moon is eclipse is eclipsing the sun, right? When the tide is at its lowest, I bet there's a part of the Titan laying in the boiling water that needs to be accessed or maybe it'll be easier to try to get the Titan to like rise when the tide is at its lowest. A month from now, when there's an eclipse, which I'm sure has some sort of relevance 
to stuff, the tide will be at its lowest. I just found that really interesting, you know, considering considering the island is the body of a titan. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to explain every single thing. But we then have freaking Bellows because we hit our fucking Kickstarter goal. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for hitting 150,000 subs, which I still didn't make that video. I'm sorry. It's been a lot of hard stuff lately. Thanks for hitting this many subs. Time to face reveal a reward through vulnerability, whether that was feigned vulnerability, genuine vulnerability. Again, I don't think that's Bellows, so I don't even think that was really a face reveal. I do need to do that at some point. I just, it's hard for me to talk about myself like that, so I apologize. A lot's happened since I hit 100K, let alone 150. Um, but thank you again. But I, I found it really interesting that we had, you know, ha ha, I'm Bellows, day of unity, scary propaganda poster. And then he phased out of the end transmission. End transmission, and then, pff, hey guys, welcome back. I just want to thank everyone for all the support lately. No, I'm not taking off my hat. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Boiling Isles. I don't know, but like, it was really interesting that like, here's the reveal that even made a joke with Willow and Gusla. Eh, like, it wasn't that crazy, given how just, oh, really? Now? Like, lowballed it was uh, when we first saw, the audience first saw um, Bellos's face. It kind of, A, I liked the joke, but then also, I again, I think it's setting us up with a, a, a twist involving Bellos, the entity, Bellos himself. Because it was, it was really off-putting how, like, you know, gentle he was with Hunter and like, oh, the, the, the rain doesn't boil, tihiu Like, it was too sweet. And now I'm starting to wonder if there's like a logistic reason for it. Oh, One Day at a Time was a really heavy line. I loved kind of ending it that way. We just have to keep going. We just have to deal with the things that we can, be there for each other, do our best. It could have ended on a joke. It could have ended on a dramatic, I will avenge you, but it ended on this, we're gonna have to take it one day at a time and figure this out. Like it's a response to an enormous amount of personal universal pain, reads tragically well, given everything going on for a while now. It's just, you know, we'll just have to figure it out even when it's a much grander issue than what an individual can take on their own. I really appreciated it, but I don't know. I'm interested to see what people think. I feel like it gave us a lot of little nuggets of things to consider, as well as kind of setting us back up for the aftermath of yesterday's life, specifically with Luce and her relationship with Amity, and then how Amity's gonna handle it, which, awesome girlfriend. Then also kind of hitting us with, you have 30 business days. You have 30 days until the day of unity. The tide's gonna be low. Something's up with Bellos. Everyone saw his face for some reason. The coven heads didn't capture us. So it like gave us a lot of, it set up the board, essentially. I think it did a good job at it and honestly just like dropping us with a lot of questions, but then also answering the question of how we do in champ, which is not great, but we got good people with us. But yeah, there you guys go. Those are my thoughts. Um, I'd love to know yours in the comment section, something that I missed. Um, your thoughts on my thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, check the settings, blah, 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 YouTube words, gaming channel in the description, speaking of the description, there's also a link there to a card for resources for social awareness, education, uh, mental health crisis lines, Trevor Project Research sources, things like that, should you or someone you know need them. Um, I'll be doing an Amphibia video soon, so you definitely want to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't, so you don't miss it. Go check them out, please. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be doing that in a couple of days, and I'll see you next week with another Owl House Ouchie. Owl House Ouchie would be the name of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, wear a mask if you choose to go out. Be mindful of others. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.